That's what we're looking for. Good. Thank you. By 2025, we are going to have 24 million different cloud native developers in the world. It means that most developers will be cloud native. We also know that 95% of all breaches are happening due to a human error because at the end of the day, you know, we are all humans. We also know that we are running faster than ever. The average now it talks about four times a day to push to production. So what it means is that we are developing faster, but we have less time to check and less time to verify you know, that our code is secure. So what are we going to do about that? Let's find out. So hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. I'm Ori Bendit from Checkmarks. I lead um, product management for Checkmarks. A bit about myself. I have two kids, Michael and Adam, and uh, Mary to know me. I'm a huge Spurs fan, so if anybody's here from Texas, uh, that's great. Uh, and also, huge Liverpool fan, and I have a massive collection of Lego. Uh, this is the last time in 2016 when I was in Austin. Uh, so enough about me. Let's talk about what I want to show you. So I want to talk about where we started in terms of development, where we are right now with cloud native becoming the, the major development theme, and what lies ahead, a few suggestions that we have that you can start doing today. So where we started, the happy days of waterfall, right? Uh, we had time. We had time for stabilization. We had time for deployment, or how it was used to be the sequential development. It was one after the other. Everybody was happy. We had time to stabilize. We had time to test. We were not in a rush. The second thing that happened during those days was the fact that you know it was all big, happy monolith, everything in the source code. I didn't need to break anything into microservices or anything like that. And then you know came the cloud, which is actually why we are here this week. And you know the continuous everything motion, continuous CI, I mean CI, CD, continuous testing, and the entire ecosystem that came together with that from testing to performance testing, mobile testing, functional testing, security testing, everything. And it brought us to the point where we are right now. And where we are right now is the fact that cloud native is growing. OK? Right now, we have 7.1 million cloud native developers with the most common technologies being containers, Kubernetes, and serverless. Now, we're not going to talk about whether serverless is here to stay, but this is what is being used. And we are growing at a rapid rate of 20% every year. Now, cloud native development comes with a few challenges. Obviously, the first challenge is the fact that we are running faster than ever. And this is because the business is demanding that. The second thing, I'm sure that you've heard the term shift left, right? Everybody wants to incorporate testing as early in the cycle as possible. And we also want to provide developer autonomy and make sure the developer has everything that they need in order to find, analyze, and remediate the issues as they find them. The next challenge is because developers are now becoming a critical part of the business, repository is the center of the universe. And if you have a tool that is not part of the repository, it will fail to succeed, and it has to be in the repository. The rise of open source, I, don't, I think that right, if I will say log4j, everybody will start moving uncomfortably in their chair, right? And I think log4j was just one example. Uh, but the fact is, open source is here. It's here to stay, and we all need to understand the risk of it. The last thing, with cloud native, we see more and more parts of the system that are being saved as code. And we call that everything as code, where the best example is infrastructure as code, where you can now, in a very elegant way, program your cloud infrastructure and have them as part of the pipeline. And those new parts of code also possess risks and potential vulnerabilities and misconfigurations. And you can definitely scan them and find um, issues in that part of the code. The second thing is we no longer talk about only the traditional code. And this is um, um, 
a quote from one of the leading analysts that talks about going beyond the traditional definition of code. So they talk about APIs, they talk about low-code platforms, um, they talk about infrastructure as code, and they suggest that you need to look for new tools to scan those new definition of code and find issues in them as early in the cycle as possible. Another thing that has changed is the fact that we want to shift security all the way to the left, right? Where in the past, we talked about it, it was one after the other. We first built the code, we then configured it. It was probably being done by a DevOps team, and the infrastructure was done by central IT or central infrastructure. And now, all of a sudden, everything is being done by developers as early in the cycle as possible in a continuous manner, and so they are responsible for the source code, the open source containers, underlying infrastructure, and they want to do that um, in a continuous manner. Another thing that has changed is the way that we are building software, right? Going from Monolith, where we started, into a modern cloud-native uh, approach. Now, remember, I told you that I'm a huge Lego fan, um, and we call this in check marks legalizing. Why? Because today it's not about building everything ourselves, but it's about mixing and matching and taking the right block from wherever is available. It can be a cloud service. It can be you know, a cloud formation template that I found. I'm putting some open source libraries, splitting my code into the different microservices. I have my APIs, and this is what consists of my cloud native development. Now, there has always been a very let's call it healthy stress between AppSec on one side and developers on the other side. Now, it's been like almost a constant battle where on one side, what do developers want? Developers want to keep it simple, right? They want to be able to trigger a scan from anywhere in the lifecycle, get results within a matter of minutes, and that's it. And they also want to have flexibility across the life cycle. You know, it can be from the first line of code in the IDE all the way to a staging or a gated check from moving from testing to staging to pre-pro to production, or how one of my customers talked to me about it. Don't touch my CI CD, right? It's already so packed, so I don't want any new tools. Just let me have what I have. So this is on the one side, developers who want simplicity on and the other side what do CISO want they want to be able to manage the risk and they want to do that in a way that they are the enablers for the process and not the bottlenecks so now that we understand where we started with beautiful waterfalls a lot of time into the era of cloud native that we are right now I want to take you for the next seven minutes and explain to you what is about to come and what lies ahead regarding application security developers and the cloud. So we talked about you know, a cloud native application, the legalizing concept. And if you want today to get full coverage from an application security standpoint, then what you need is probably to have six to 12 different scanners. You need to have SAS for static analysis of your source code. You need to have open source SCA analysis. You need to have API security to cover your APIs. You need to have infrastructure code scanning. You need containers. You need supply chain. And all in all, these are the tools that you need in order to get full coverage. Now, I'm sure that you've all been there. You said, yes, I want to get started with my application security. And you download an open source, or you configured it in your CI. And what you get is 167 highs. Now, the problem is that you have all been there, right? Nobody has time to fix 167 high vulnerabilities, right? Because we are running too fast. Now, the thing is, and this is something that we saw this year, and we believe will continue, and we started with check marks um, earlier in the year with the launch of Fusion. Teams today don't have time to do AppSec, not because they don't want to, because they fear that it's a waste of time. And why? Because on one hand, the standalone scanner, whether it's SAST, open source analysis, they lack the context of the wider cloud application. So why waste time on an SQL injection 
or upgrading an open source library if it's not being used in production. The second is because of those multiple scanners, it creates a vulnerabilities fatigue. So you get 200 different vulnerabilities from all of these different scanners. So you're overloaded with too much information or TMI, and you don't know where to start. And the last thing, even if I wanted to fix everything, I don't have the time, and I don't have the resources to fix everything. So going forward, instead of finding and fixing everything, you need to ask a very simple question where we as in check marks are helping you answer is if you had five minutes to remediate where you need to focus because you can't, you can't fix everything. You can find everything, but you can't fix everything. So you need help to focus on the most important items. So instead of talking about vulnerability, you need to talk about risk management. And this is one of the major things that we are working on. We started this year, and we will continue working in next year regarding risk management and elevating the discussion from single vulnerability into a holistic risk management view. Now, I want to talk for one minute about the average day developer. Average day developer don't really care about security. OK, I know that it might sound like, you know, groundbreaking, but they don't really care. They are not being measured on security. They are measuring on velocity, on quality, but not about security. So if they don't care, who cares? And this is another thing that is going to change in the market, is that instead of having developers versus application security teams, we are going to see the rise of security champions. Security champions are the go-to guys or the go-to uh, engineer in all things that are sec that are application security within the development teams, they care. They are being trained and they are being measured on security, and they can bridge the gap between application security and developers. So if you're struggling today with um, your application security program, I do suggest that you take a look at Security Champions because it probably has everything that you need in order to improve your program. Now, going back to the average developer, like if you remember five or 10 years ago, it was all about user experience, right? And what we see now is that companies understand that it's also about developer experience. And when it comes to developer experience, developer care. Now, if you want to know what is developer experience, it's mostly about three main things. It's about efficiency. Help me be a better developer. It's about helping me now. I want to see immediate value. And I want to keep it simple. If it's not simple, I will not use it as a developer. And this is exactly why we launched Developer Hub, which is a free site by check marks to have everything, all the tools the developer want um, and need in order to secure, uh, to develop secure code. And also, a great example from Amazon is Amazon Code Whisperer. So this is their auto-generation code. So I do suggest that you take a look at that. So we talked about shift left. And there is the famous Beyonce song, to the left, to the left. So ever since you know, Beyonce started that, everybody is shifting left, right? But what about the right side of the house, right? What about what happens in production? And here, the, the tip that I want to give you is that production can give you all the insights that you need and you miss in order to get better prioritization. Why fix all the APIs if only 20% of them are being used in production? And when was the last time that you looked at your application performance monitoring or your logs? You can get great insights there, and it can help kind of give you new insights into your next development cycle. So it's no longer about shifting left or shifting right. It's simply about the circle of DevSecOps. It starts with the, with the first line of code, as left as possible. You push to production, you get alerts, and then it continues. So it's not about left or right. It's about the circle of DevSecOps. And now, recap time. So what did we talk about? We talked about where we started with Waterfall, we are now at the era of cloud-native development and what lies ahead 
is all the great tips that I gave you. And last thing that I want to kind of leave you for next time is that just think about low code, okay? Are you ready to have Joe from finance push to production? I'm not sure that you are. So thank you very much for your time. I'm Ori, you can come to the booth if you want to continue the discussion. Thank you very much.